Now we'll go to the next module where we'll first see how to compute the gradient with respect to the output units because that was the first guy in our chain, right? That's the first person that we need to talk to, okay? So that's the part that we are going to focus on. So this is the output and when I say I want to compute the gradient with respect to output unit, what do I actually mean? What's the quantity that I'm looking for? I'll help you out. Actually what I meant by output unit is this entire thing, right? So I actually meant ALs. Okay, but it's it's a fair answer. Even the y hat is a fair answer. Okay, in fact, I'm going to start with y hat and then go to al. So I'll have to start with this guy, and then come to this guy. Right. So this is the loss. This is y hat, which is equal to y1 hat, y2 hat up to yk hat. So these are the k values that we have here, and we are looking at cross entropy. That means we are looking at the classification problem, right? So we have got a distribution over the k classes. That's what y hat looks like. And we know that one of these guys is the right class, maybe say y2. So the loss function is minus log of y hat 2 because 2 is the correct class in this toy example that I'm considering, okay? So the loss function, I'm just repeating the definition, right? That's how the loss function is, okay? Now, uh, oh God, okay. So again, this is what our y hat looks like, okay? Now I want to compute the gradient with respect to any of the output units, right? So it could be y1, y2, y3, y4 up to yk, right? So this i actually can take values from 1 to k, in this case 1 to 2, right? Okay. Now can you tell me what is this loss? Okay, this much is fine. Can you tell me what is this derivative? Minus 1 by minus 1 by y hat l, if i is equal to l and zero otherwise. How many if you get that? Cool. Okay. So it's a very simple thing, right? You can think of this as z and this as y. Only if z is equal to y, then the derivative would exist. Otherwise, it was going to be zero, right? Okay. So how do I write this, this iffy part using? How many of you have seen indicator variables before? Okay, good. So this is what you are telling me, right? It's going to be minus one by y hat l if i is equal to l, okay? And if i is not equal to l, then these two things are not related, right? This is a function of something else and you're taking a derivative with respect to a different quantity. So it's a constant with respect to that quantity and the answer would be zero, okay? Now I'm going to write this as this, right? So this is the same as saying, so this variable actually, this is known as the indicator variable. It takes on the value one if the condition in the bracket holds, otherwise it takes on the value zero. So this is exactly, I'm writing exactly this, but in a more compact manner, okay? Is that clear to everyone? Okay. So this is what the uh, quantity, this is the quantity that we have computed with respect to one of the output units, okay? So this is what derivative, partial derivative, gradient. How many of you say derivative? No one likes derivative, partial derivative. That's always the safest choice. Partially to right hogai, right? And gradient? Oh, there's one brave soul who says gradient. Okay, don't worry, we'll fix that. Okay, so this is the partial derivative. Why? Because my y hat is actually a vector and I'm taking the derivative with respect to one of those guys. Okay, now if I want the gradient with respect to y hat, what would that look like? A vector which is a collection of partial derivatives. Okay, so let's see. This is the quantity that I'm interested in. I'm interested in the gradient of the loss function with respect to the vector y hat. So remember the vector y hat is y1 hat, y2 hat up to yk hat, right? So this gradient is going to be a collection of the partial derivatives with respect to y1 hat, y2 hat and so on, right? Okay, now what is, what is each of these quantities? How many of you are fine with this? How many of you are not fine with this? I did not see as many hands as well. Would have like, okay, how many are fine with it? Again, please raise your hands up, 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 okay, fine. Uh, is this okay, right? So it's simple, right? So this quantity, the derivative is either going to be zero or is it going to, it is going to be one by y1 hat, right? If L is equal to one, right? And that's exactly what I've done. So now how many elements here are actually going to be non-zero? At a time, how many of these is going to be non-zero? One, which one? 
the one corresponding to L, right? Everything else is going to be zero. So this is a dash vector, one hot vector. Okay. So now I'm going to write one hot vector like this. What have we done? Okay. Okay. Where E L is what? One hot vector such that its lth entry is one. Okay, that's what I'm going. To, that's how I'm going to define E L. Is that fine with everyone? Okay, and uh, so you see the story. How did how we went about computing this? We started with a partial derivative with respect to one of the guys, right? We found a formula for y i. We saw that this formula is generic enough. And so now we can compute the gradient, which is a collective of all these y i's, where i ranges from one to k, right? And then we just put that in a gradient vector. So this story is going to repeat throughout the lecture, where we try to compute the gradient with respect to one guy, and then generalize. Oh, sorry, we compute the partial derivative with respect to one guy, and then generalize and try to find the gradient. Okay, fine. Okay. So what have I? What do I have so far? I have this quantity. What does till which part of the diagram am I currently? The dash green part, dark green part. Okay, I'm till here. I need to go till the light green part. Right? That's collectively the output unit. Okay, although I've divided into two halves, but when I say output unit, I mean that output neuron, right? Complete neuron. Okay. So what I'm actually interested in is these quantities, or more specifically. Okay. This is what I am interested in. What is this? One of those guys, right? This A L is actually A L one up to A L K, right? So this is one of those guys. So this is going to be the gradient. Or this is going to be the derivative, partial derivative. Sorry. Okay. Uh, now what do? How do we proceed from here? Okay. Now I'll again have to compute this. We already know that. Okay, good. But before that, I want you to answer one question, right? So y hat l. Okay, what is y hat l? It's the output corresponding to the correct class. Does it depend on an arbitrary a l i? So in the previous thing, we saw that only when i is equal to l, there is a connection. In this case, is there a connection always or only when i is equal to l? Always. Why? Soft max. So, denominator has all the al i's, right? So, this is there, right? So, y hat l in the numerator, of course, it only has this unit, which corresponds to the lth. Oh, I probably did not choose my variables very well. So, lth component of a capital L, right? And but in the denominator you have the entire sum, which means that every output guy here, each of these dark green guys, depends on each of the dash green guys, light green guys. Okay, good. So that's at least settled that we always the we can always compute this partial derivative. We don't need an if else here. There is no thing like l is equal to i, then what will happen? It will always have this partial derivative. Is that clear to everyone? Okay. So we'll now derive the full expression for this so this is what we are interested in is this fine so this is a function of the form so you are taking uh, okay how do i say this so uh, yeah this is log of a function so first you will take the derivative with respect to log and then push the partial derivative inside right so that would be minus 1 by y hat l and then the derivative with respect to y hat l okay now what is y hat l the softmax function, right? So it's the lth entry of the softmax function applied to that output vector. What's the output vector? A L, right? So it's the lth entry of the softmax, uh, lth entry of the function applied to the output vector. Is that fine? Everyone gets this? I don't see a lot of thoughtful nodding. Okay, right. So this was our AL. What is our output? 
right? So now one of these guys here is the lth guy and one of these guys here is the lth guy, right? So what you do is you take this, you apply the softmax function to it, which again gives you a vector and now you are interested in the lth component of that vector, okay? That's what this quantity means, okay? It should be clear now. Now I will just do some simple um, math stuff here and we should be able to derive this. Is it fine? I've just replaced it by the actual softmax formula. This is a derivative of the form u by v, right? So what's the formula for that? Yeah, I, I perfectly right, yeah. So this is what it would be, right? I mean, it's, you all know this, so I'm not going to spend time on this, right? So now I'm just going to substitute the values here. Uh, yeah, it's getting a bit nasty, but it's not very difficult, right? So, so, this, so this is our g of x, so I'm taking the derivative of that. Then this is this one over h of x. You can just figure it out, right? I mean, it's, everyone just read this for a, few seconds and let me know if this is not clear. This is g, this is h in this formula, right? I've just substituted the g's and h's in the formula. How many of you get this? Okay, how many of you are still struggling? Okay, not. Okay, if this, if this is clear, then the rest of it should be fine. Now, what is this quantity going to be? It's derivative of the form e raised to x, right? So, it's e raised to x, always if i is equal to l, right? So now we have this dependence because we are looking at the numerator, but the numerator only depends on the lth entry, right? So now you're trying to take the de derivative of the lth entry with respect to some arbitrary ith entry. So only if l is equal to i, you'll get the derivative, right? So that's, is this correct? Okay. Now, what about this? How many terms in the summation would remain? One, which one? Where i dash is equal to i. Right? So the ith guy would remain. Okay? The rest of it is straightforward. Right? This square I have just divided into two parts. Okay? Uh, now let's see. Can you simplify this? Because I can't. Yeah, I can. Okay. Can you simplify this? What is this? Softmax. And which entry of the softmax? Lth entry ith entry, lth entry with the so with the indicator variable, okay? Okay, but what is this? This is our input, <coughs> hidden layer, output, okay. So, yeah, okay. Now, let's see, right, what's the next step? Okay. This is, should have been y hat i, but y hat is equal to f of x, right? So, uh, we can fix this, uh, Gunit. So, okay, fine. So, we have, actually, what do we have now? We have the derivative of the loss function with respect to the ith unit of the output layer, right? And which part of the output layer? The pre-activation part, okay? Now, what am I going to do? I have a formula which tells me how to compute this. What was I actually interested in? So now, how am I going to go from here to there? I just put all the partial derivatives into a vector and that vector is the gradient. Okay, good. So we have this one formula. It's okay if some of you did not get this derivation. It's very, very straightforward. If you go back and look at it, I'm pretty sure you'll get it. There's nothing in this. It's very simple elementary stuff, right? Except for some trickery here and there. So, okay. Now, what would this look like? We should add actually L theta here. Hmm? This would look like a collection of all the partial derivatives. We have a generic formula. What will we do now? What is the first entry? Minus indicator L equal to 1 minus y hat 1. Which is the variable that we are indexing over? I, right? Not L. Oh, God. Oh, we are indexing over. Okay, have I goofed up? Oh, th that is wrong, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, that is wrong. Okay. 
uh, fine okay then this is fine okay we are indexing over i and then we can do this now can you simplify this i am looking for okay this is the element wise difference of two of the indicator vector and y hat oh hey we should change all this y hat is equal to f of x right but i just want it to be consistent as y hat so is this fine is the simplification fine right so we have come a long way right we have finished this part okay we have got the gradients with respect to the output units okay this much part is clear to everyone module a bit of the math which you can go back and look at it this entire derivation is fine but you get the concept right that we start with one unit from there grow the gradient then keep going applying the chain rule right so we started with the dark green guys and then went to the light green guys okay now we have the derivative with respect to the entire light green vector okay and that's what we had started off with right we wanted the gradient with respect to the output units okay so that's where we'll end that module